Hey guys, this is Ismos and this is how to make a coffee cup from a cylinder in Blender. Use Shift A to access the Add menu and add a cylinder. Now you can go to Edit mode by accessing this top menu here. Now switch to Vertex mode by clicking the middle icon here. We want to select this down ring edge loop here by using Alt and then left click to select the entire loop. Now, if you use Ctrl B, you can bevel that edge loop, and if you use your middle mouse wheel, you can scroll forward and go back to add a few edge loops so that we get a shape that resembles a mug. Now, if you hit one on your keyboard, on your numpad, you can access uh, the front orthographic view uh, so that we can see our shape uh, easily without any perspective. Now you can either change to object mode using this stop menu or just tab using the tab key or just press the tab key on your keyboard to access the object menu. Now our coffee cup doesn't have a way uh, to pour coffee in so I'm just going to tab back to edit mode using the tab key and select this top face by switching to face mode. Hit X to delete it. Now we can easily pour our coffee into our mug. But uh, I don't like how thin these walls are, so I'm going to go to the modifiers and then add a solidifier modifier to add some thickness uh, to the walls of our mug. Now the thickness is there, but it's not enough, so I'm just going to increase that using this value here. And I think that is uh, good enough around there. But the edges here are too sharp, so to round them off, I'm just going to first collapse this and then add a subdivision modifier. This will kind of smoothen uh, the mug a bit. So now I don't like to see these faces here, facets. So to easily remove that, you can right click on the object and then shade smooth and now that will make everything look smoother. We're still seeing some sharpness around this edge, which I don't want. So if we tab into edit mode, we can add supporting loops around this object so that we can reduce on the on the sharpness here. So if you use Ctrl R, you can add a loop that move it up somewhere like that, I think. You can see now our mug is a bit rounded. Now let's add a handle to our mug. I also don't like how the shape is to, it doesn't really look like a mug right now. So let's tab back to edit mode and add an extra edge loop here, Control R. Then you can hit S, to scale this up. And if you release and go back to object mode, you can see we're getting this weird shape that I don't like. So let's go back to edit mode and uh, reduce the scale here. Then I'll tab into, if you hit one, you can access the vertex menu. If you hit two, you can access the edge menu or three to access uh, the first menu. Let's go back to this vertex menu and then Alt select this edge to select this entire loop. Scale this as well so that we can create a mark that actually looks like a mark. Now, if you look closely, our mug doesn't look very smooth, especially in this area. It's a bit jagged like that. To remove that, we can increase our subdivision levels and that should smoothen the, the mug even more. You can see now we are getting a better curve than we had before. I'll remove this. Now let's add our handle. Right now we are in front orthogonal and I want my handle to be on the side. So I'll switch to right orthogonal by clicking, by pressing the three numpad key. Now I want the handle to be in this shape. And the best way to create 
to easily create this handle is by adding a plane. So I'm just going to move my cursor here, 3D cursor around here by, hit, by pressing down shift and then right clicking. Then I want to add a plane. I'll rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees, actually on the Y axis by 90 degrees. Now, I usually like to work with uh, random colors turned on so that I can easily identify other different objects I have in my scene. And to do that, you just go under the overlays here or shading tab here drop down menu, click random, and then all the objects will be given a random color. Uh, this doesn't affect your final output, but uh, it makes it easier for you to identify the different objects you have in your scene. Now, I want to have this shape here. As I said, we want to do this in the most efficient and most e easiest way to do it. So let's tap into edit mode and move these vertices around until we get a shape that is close to what we want. Now, this is very few edges to create uh, this rounded shape we want. So what I'm going to do is bevel this vertex using Control Shift B to round off. It will create multiple uh, vertices, smoothening that corner like that. So if we drag this a bit out like that, we can use again the shortcut Control Shift B. To make this even more rounded but uh, the kind of curve we are creating is determined by these two or by the adjacent vertices so let me show you here Control shift b we get that but uh, if we move this around here you can see our curve changes a little bit Yes. Select these two, this vertex and this, right click, subdivide and then to add an extra vertex there. Let me make pull this back a bit so that when I use Ctrl Shift B, the curve has a nice space to uh, to extend to. If you move if you use your middle mouse wheel, you can add more point, control points or more vertices or less, depending on what you want. So around there. Uh, these two here are too close to each other, so I'm just going to drag this from there. Now, this here, I can even just extrude since we are not, uh, since we have a reference curve to look at there. And see the shape we have here, it doesn't really look like a handle, so what I'm going to do is delete this face since we don't want that and use X, delete only faces so that we retain the curve. Let me first get rid of these uh, lines. Go back to the object. I don't need this edge as well, so you can see the shape we are trying to have. Now we can continue anything, moving these control points around until you're satisfied with the shape. You can even turn on proportional editing and just select a vertex and then up here you will see the option for our proportional editing. And uh, when you move this, all the points around it can be influenced influenced by its movement something like that now it's still faceted and not very well curved so we can add a subdivision surface modifier again to make it more curved like that and then you can apply the subdivisions control a while you move your cursor above uh, the modifier control a you can see now we have a more rounded handle. Now this doesn't have any thickness and you can see in the final render here it won't, it doesn't even register or show up in our object. To give this some thickness we can go under object and then convert this into a curve and what that will enable us is that we can now go to the curve properties and add a geometry and under that bevel we can increase the bevel and you can see now we get some thickness out to our curve now you can right click and shade smooth so that is also made smoother but uh, what we want to do is to have this object joined directly to this so that we don't see any seams or anywhere that yeah, any sharp edges here we want this transition to be as smooth as possible 
So to do that, what we're going to do is first join this to the handle to the curve using Ctrl J. But because these are two different objects, object types, let me make sure this is recording. This is a curve and this is a mesh. You can't really just use Ctrl J to join them. What we have to do is go back and convert this into a mesh. Convert and then mesh. You can see now they're all meshes so we can easily join them into a single object. Let's first undo this. And the reason we are undoing this is because we have a few modifiers here that we haven't applied at this. For example, uh, the thickness of this mag is being added by this solidify modifier and we have no way to edit uh, that the polygons that make up that uh, without applying the solidify modifier. So let's do that. Apply the solidify modifier by moving your cursor above the modifier and then using Ctrl A to apply that. Uh, for now we can also turn off the subdivisions uh, so that we can see the uh, the base polygons uh, that will make it easy for us to join uh, the different objects. So we can select this and then can select the handle and then this Ctrl J to join them into a single object. Remember we want a seamless uh, weld uh, between the two. So what we can do is add another loop here, Ctrl R, so that it can align with the vertex around there. We can also scale it up just a bit and have something like that. Now, other thing we can do, we can remove this edge loop here. Or if you want to make this easier for you, let's first hide uh, the background, these inside faces by selecting uh, the entire edge loop here. I'm using, I'm holding down Alt and then clicking on any edge here uh, to select uh, the edge loops. You can select these faces, uh, this edge loop here and hit F and also select this, hit F uh, to close it up. Now, if you select this edge and in Ctrl L, you can select all the faces attached to that. And the reason we want, to, we are doing this is so that we can use booleans are to join other two objects to mark the two meshes so f go to the faces and then intersect boolean we don't want intersect we, we don't want uh, to use difference we want union so that we can join uh, the two meshes remember we have hidden uh, parts of this mesh so let's unhide that now, if we go back and see what we have Booleans create quite a mess, so we want to clean that up by merging a few vertices we have here. So I'm going to merge this out of this using M plus and then this to that plus. And, uh, now, there are a few things we can do to clean this up, but uh, let's make again, we're trying to find a quick and faster way to, and an inefficient way to do this. So let's select these faces around that make up this other uh, connection between uh, the mag and the and the handle and hit i to insert them this will create an extra edge loop this edge loop here and uh, that will make it easy for us to uh, to create uh, that to create a seamless bond with this so i can even uh, select this edge loop dissolve it and then you can see would make it would make the transition even more smoother. So I can then you can just find the corresponding vertices so that we can reduce on the size of the end goal we have here. Something like that. Now we can also select this edge loop, Ctrl X to dissolve it as so that we get rid of it. If you want you can add an extra edge loop here so that you can get rid of that end gone but I'm okay with this it doesn't matter that much especially if we add the subdivision you can see to make things look much smoother now you can also clean up this side but uh, for this area you might need an extra edge loop here so I'll just add that and do the same thing here except we might have to first clean up some of these edge loops here get rid of that 
if we could add that uh, we want a seamless loop around here so i'm just going to join this get rid of that join this to that i'm just joining the closest vertices to, together so get rid of triangles and any extra angles join that to that That. until we have a seamless edge loop around uh, this like so now we can get rid of that we don't need this and also dissolve that as well I think this would be better to connect this directly to that. Get rid of this. Get this to that. But it might be better to just do it this way. So you can see the edges we have. Good. Again, we can use the same technique of just selecting the surrounding end guns. Hit I to insert them. You can also use Ctrl T uh, to triangulate your end gun so that you get rid of all the end guns and then use Alt J while you still have the selection active to remove uh, some of the triangles, reduce some of the triangles, or go in manually and uh, just get rid of them. Now I can get rid of this extra edge loop looping around after X, then just mark this to the nearest edge. I don't like how tight this is, so I'm just going to dissolve that so that we have something like that. Now we have our mark. can add a few extra egg loops to clean this up but uh, since this is a basic tutorial we can just add a subdivision surface and uh, our render will look just as good let's get this just a little bit there you go if your handle is too small you can select any edge loop like that increase use control using control plus you increase your selection using all control plus until you get almost the, the entire handle selected and then use alt s to make it more larger something like that all you have to do next is add a few materials add a material and uh, you're good to go yeah, so that's a quick tutorial on how to make a mug in Blender. I'll continue doing this uh, series uh, depending on uh, the reaction. I uh, can even make a spot for this so that, is, so that the, the bottom is a bit flatter. And, uh, by adding an extra edge loop. And, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.